One of my favorite things about getting this job at Fox Sports is that I get to do the power rankings, and I love making all 32 NFL fan bases mad at me every week during the season. And of course, that's that's why we do it. We hate your team, and we want you to be upset. So without further ado, we are debuting the power rankings here on the podcast. I, I did some before the season, but here are your week two power rankings. If you're watching us, they're all on the very pretty board. Shout out to Danny for the graphics. They look amazing. If you're not watching, if you're listening, you can go to foxsports.com and read the written version of it. I am nothing if not versatile. I am a utility man. You're welcome. All right, so here we go. I, look, I'm not going to keep you here all day breaking down all 32 teams, though again, Hit up foxsports.com. Hit up the Fox Sports app. I broke down every team in the league. But for the purposes of the podcast, I just wanted to highlight a few risers and a few fallers. Week two is really hard because heading into the season opener, you've got eight months of data to go on. Oh, who'd they draft? Who'd they sign? Who's back? Who's gone? And now I'm supposed to react to one game and decide what am I overreacting to? What am I not overreacting to? Like, what's the body of work here? So I wanted to highlight a few. Let's start all the way down at the bottom. I promise I'm not picking on you, New York Giants, but with a performance like that against Dallas on Sunday, you got to fall. I had the Giants right in the middle of the pack at the start of the season, 16th overall. I see them as a fringe wildcard team right there in the, in the mediocre middle. You get housed 40 to nothing on your own turf. You, you got to go down. They, they looked hapless. The offensive line looked pathetic for lack of a better word. Daniel Jones, that's his first performance coming off of a $40 million contract signed in the off season. I don't think they'll stay there. Like I don't, to be fair to the giants, they, they're not as bad as they looked. We actually, we looked this up today. We got, we, our stats department at Fox is amazing. 31 teams in the Super Bowl era have lost a game by 40 or more points and still made the playoffs. So the season's not over big blue, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to penalize the giants for going out like that in a primetime game. All right. Next team in the, I guess you would think of this as the fallers, but they're actually risers. Shout out the LA Rams. I started you all the way down at 31. And you shut me up real good. You went out and beat the Seattle Seahawks by three scores. I bumped you up to 25. I'm not ready to say that the Rams are are frisky or at the or the Rams are back. I don't know, but but Matthew Stafford, he put a lot of us on notice that hey, maybe just because he's 35 and he got hurt last year, maybe he's not as washed as we think, especially if his offensive line holds up. All right, now moving into the middle. Green Bay Packers fans, where you at? Where are my Packers? I'm I'm feeling very vindicated and very validated after an impressive performance against the Chicago Bears in week one. I picked the Packers to win the division. I picked the Packers to be a playoff team. So 14 feels like a great spot. I had them further down a few spots lower than that to start the season just because we hadn't seen Jordan Love do it. Well, he goes out, he throws for 245 and three tutties, and the defense looks phenomenal compared to last year, swarming all over the Chicago Bears offensive line, sacking Justin Fields four times. Yes, this is exactly the Packer team I thought I was going to see. Now they just got to keep doing it week after week. But yes, I think the Packers deserve to be in the playoff range. Moving up, a team that we haven't given enough credence to, and that's the Cleveland Browns. You know, I know fan bases get frustrated when the story is all about how the other team lost. And that's what's happening with the Bengals and the Browns Browns kick the Bengals butts 24 to three in rainy conditions up there in Cleveland. And I get it. I mean, the Bengals are the, one of the darling franchises of the NFL back-to-back AFC title games. We all get it, but the Browns took it to them. They deserve a little bit of credit for that. I had them ranked back closer to the twenties heading into the season because Deshaun Watson looked abysmal during his time as the starter last year, to be fair, still didn't look great. Still didn't look wonderful, but 
We're giving the Bengals all these excuses for rainy conditions. We can give the Browns the same benefit of the doubt. They ran the ball for 200 yards. If you know anything, you know Nick Chubb and those big uglies up front are going to get some rushing yards. And I'll say it again. Jim Schwartz and this Cleveland pass rush made life miserable on the Bengals. Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith has the potential to be one of the most terrifying edge duos in the NFL. They absolutely looked like it in this game. Cleveland needed to beef up its defense in a big way. They were just as big a part of the problem as Watson last year. And early indicator is very, very positive. I know it's one week, but if you do that to one of the best offenses in the league, I don't care if it's raining sideways. It's very impressive. And that's why I've got the Browns hanging just outside the top 10. Miami Dolphins, where are you at? I got you all the way up in the five spot, my dudes. How could I not when Tua Tungavailoa apparently is like the new betting favorite for NFL MVP? That's what I heard anyway. I mean, can I blame people for thinking that after he throws for 266? What do you have? Yeah, do you have three touchdowns or, or two or four? Had three, three touchdowns, 466. Tyreek Hill goes over 200 yards. This offense looks absolutely as fun as I thought it would. The defense, yes, you're playing the Chargers. You're not going to have good stats going against an offensive offense that talented, but they got the dub. They pressured Justin Herbert when it mattered. Jalen Phillips, Christian Wilkins getting home at the key time in the fourth quarter. I, I picked this team to win the AFC and not to make light of the Aaron Rodgers situation, but suddenly the AFC East looks like it might be a little more manageable than it did a day or two ago. So I'm feeling really good about the Miami dolphins. I think they absolutely deserve to be in the top five. And then the big movement, the big shakeup, Look, it's rare. If you're at the top of the power rankings, you win more than you lose. It's rare to see so much chaos at the top of the power rankings. The chiefs lose. The Buffalo Bills lose. The Cincinnati Bengals look terrible. Philadelphia wins, but not what you would call an inspiring performance. And that sets the stage for my new number one team. It's the San Francisco 49ers. It's well-deserved. I know they lost to the Eagles. That was last year. Nobody cares about that. Brock Purdy's back. Did you see him? He looked awesome. Brandon Ayuk looked awesome. The defense swarmed. The defense looked like they knew what Pittsburgh was going to do better than the Steelers did. And yes, we don't know how good the Steelers are. We think of them as a playoff caliber team. Maybe they're not. Doesn't matter. You whoop somebody 30 to 7. It's impressive, especially a West Coast team flying out to the Eastern time zone to play an, a, an early afternoon game against the Steelers, a, a team that had a lot to be excited for, and they just beat them down. And Brock Purdy looked great doing it. That was the big part. We talked about it in, in yesterday's show. The big question was whether the second year quarterback was going to look good. He looked great. I'm sorry to the birds fans and the chiefs fans and the Dallas fans that want me to say otherwise, but the 49ers are absolutely deserving of grabbing the top ranking heading in to week two. 